Hello, people of YouTube. This is Steve Gray. This is Gray's Guitars. Thank you for watching. Do you have $20,000 burning a hole in your pocket? And you think, you know what? I want to spend it on a guitar. Well, then, I may have the guitar for you. The Adam Jones Flying V Collector's Edition. This is the reversed silver burst. Only 50 of these are being made. It's your Murphy Ab, late Lab, Aged, all that fancy relicking stuff that I don't really care about um, on this guitar. And hopefully they will make this a USA version and an Epiphone version because that seems to be what they've been doing lately. You know, you, you look at the Kurt uh, Hammett guitar there. They got the 20000 version. You get, they got the $3,000 version. Now they got the Epiphone $1,500 version. Uh, and I'm assuming they're probably going to do the same with this, because this is out of stock already. There was 50 of them. They have been sold. What is 50 times 20,000? Uh, actually, we can calculate that. Let's pull up the old calculator here in my settings. I don't... What was that, like $5 million or something? No, it's a million dollars. million dollars. So they sold 50 guitars... Made a million dollars. That is crazy to me. Let's just take a look at this, though. So this is Proto number four. Got the Schaller brand of tuners. The burst is even on the back. I mean, look at the relicking as well. Uh, you got string through body. Get your Gibson custom plate there, made in USA. They didn't really, I'm surprised, they didn't really do any aging with the knobs or the pickups. Doesn't look like they did. You know, usually they do some sort of aging. With the knobs, the pickups, and the tuners. They, they did not seem to do that with this version. So let's let's learn a little bit more about this. So Gibson Custom Shop is the pinnacle of craftsman quality and sound of excellence. Each instrument celebrates Gibson's legacy uh, through accuracy, authenticity, and attention to detail. Out of this world, limited edition Flying V. Adam Jones from Multi-Platinum Selling and Multi-Grammy Award winning band Tool. It's one of Rock's most talented and sonically innovative guitarists. This... Out of this world limited edition Flying V from Adam Jones is designed to build to reflect his preference for heavier guitars features, a non-weight relief mahogany body, string through features, a Futura style split headstock design, a Dean headstock design, <laughs> shots fired at Gibson, custom appointments, a truss rod cover with exclusive artwork overlaid in a painstakingly applied reversed antique silver burst finish. This is the first time to my knowledge that they are doing the reverse silver burst. Also comes with an adjustable the strap developed by Adam himself. Uh, it is adorned with, with two head dog hand cast and plate brooch developed by artist Alex Kuno. Aged by artisans at the Murphy Lab, only 50 units will be handcrafted by the expert luthers and craft people at the Gibson Custom Shop in Asheville, Tennessee as part of this extraordinary limited run. So let's see what we got here. Uh, Flying V, three police pay, there's a three police plain maple top, no weight relief. A seven ply top single ply fretboard binding, so you get all sorts of crazy binding on this bad boy. Uh, mahogany, uh, pretty Murphy Ab, Ab aged nitrocellulose lacquer. So I mean, no binding on the back, which would have been nice to have some some binding on the back, put a cap on that bad boy, but maybe he didn't want it. But uh, essentially, yeah. If you want to own one of 50 of these, good luck because you're probably going to have to pay, pony up for them. So medium C, typical fretboard radius, bone eh, bone for the nut material, you usually see graft attack. Um, joint is, oh, they got hide glue, and that's that's definitely a little different, hide glue coming from the custom shop. Uh, 24 three quarters, 22, typical nut width, ebony fretboard's always nice. Uh, the frets are going to be the nickel silver alloy, mother of pearl, which is always nice. Let's go to hardware. Okay, they're calling it light aged chrome for the hardware. Uh, so the Schaller M6 with large buttons, uh, truss rod cover, two ply. Uh, let's see, do we have a up close of that truss rod cover? And then any of the pictures I pulled up? No, let me see if we can get it up close of that in one of these images. There we go, right there. Oh, right, that is kind of a neat. It's like two wolves, like kind of kind of inverted, going back and forth at each other. Kind of neat. Two pneumatic black. Uh, pick guard is not mounted. Do not mount it. <laughs> Do not mount that pick guard, please. Uh, jack plate is chrome recessed. It's kind of like a strat. Uh, so tailpiece, through body standard, switch tip is chrome. 
uh, control covers, black custom shop switch cover, pickups, neck, chrome bridge, none, electronics. Let's see. Ah, we're doing the custom bucker. So custom bugger reverse mounted in the neck. The bridge pickup is a custom mounted Seymour Duncan DDJ. So that is like his own personal uh, Seymour Duncan there. So we got a Switchcraft output jack, Switchcraft pickup selector. Uh, interesting, we have different types of pots in here. So two volume, two tones. You have a DiMarzio 500K volume pot for the bridge and three CTS pots. So my guess is somewhere at some point in time, he had Gibson uses CTS pots and Gibson branded CTS pots. Uh, what most likely happened in one of his guitars is one of the pots crapped out after being abused for years and they replaced it with the DiMarzio. He kind of liked it. He kind of liked the sound of it. So he just kept going with it. So that is kind of interesting that they are using one DiMarzio for the volume pot of the bridge and everything else is a CTS. So 10 to 52, you do get a hard shell case. So the accessories, you got a strap, a certificate of authenticity with a signed photo. So you do get his actual signature, which, you know, probably helps add to the value. But 20 grand for a guitar, I mean, I, I complain about this all the time, whether it's the custom shop level or not. But you know what? All I can say is rich people are buying it. Do I have $20,000 to spend on a guitar? No. No, if, if I was going to spend that much money on a guitar, I'd probably go with an R9. And I don't think an R9 is touching 20 grand, uh, to my knowledge, uh, at, at least. I'd probably, I'd probably go R9 uh, or R0, RO. I, I could buy both of them, technically, because uh, I think they're like, what, five or six grand? Uh, somewhere, somewhere around there. But um, they're super collector's editions. They're not going to be played. They're, they're pieces of art. So, I mean, at, at this point, Gibson is selling pieces of art. And they have no problem doing it. And you know why? Because people buy them. So, you make it super limited edition. You know, sure, you can make cheaper versions for the masses if people want to buy them later on. Like, with the greenie, with the, you know, there's just like three or four different price points there. And then, that's probably what they're going to continue to do. Because if the guitar sells, why not? And that, that's what it comes down to. You know, if there's enough hype, enough following, enough people buy it, and these things are gone, it says, look, notify me when they're available. So they are already gone. Uh, people will buy them. And they will sell them. They will hang them on their walls. Uh, will resale value, is this thing going to stay around $20,000? I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think, I, I, I honestly think when it gets to something to this price point, um, you, you have to kind of be, you got to love Tool, you got to love <laughs> Adam Jones, and you got to have a lot of money. That's, that's what it kind of comes down to, buying something like this. Uh, it's kind of like when Fender released that crazy expensive replica of Eddie Van Halen's guitar, and now they're worth like less than half of what people paid for them. I feel like it's going to be the same thing. Is this thing ever going to go under $10,000? Probably not, but, you know, give it 10, 20 years um, when Tool becomes a little bit more irrelevant uh, than it is currently. And, and you know, the, the price will be significantly less, I, th I think, is what will happen. But uh, as of right now, they're sold out. You can't get one. Uh, hold out and see if Gibson USA makes them uh, in a couple of months a non-aged version. Uh, and it'll probably be around the $4,000 mark. That's my best guess. Uh, other than that, thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, comment what you want, you want to see for future guitar music related content. Uh, share, like, subscribe. I don't know if I said that already, but whatever. <laughs> thank you for watching. It is appreciative. And as always, have a good one.